welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. So I had a different vlog for you today, but it's the first day of rifle season here in Kentucky. And true to form, Levi has gotten a deer. <laughs> Okay guys, so Levi has broken down his deer into the primal cuts this morning and we have a really unique situation that we've never had before and so I figured we'd take the opportunity to show you guys the comparison of goat meat to venison. And there is a big difference. The taste is relatively similar, but the yield off of each animal is not like a one-to-one -one at all. So when we process our goats, really all we're trying to get out of them is roasts, essentially. Roasts and grind. So these shoulders are amazing, roasted in, in the oven, low and slow. And the same is true for the back legs. With the neck and other trimmings, we will cut that off to become grind. But one of the really big differences between goat and venison is these really amazing cuts. So this is the back strap off of the venison. And this is a, a nine to 10 month old goat. And this is where the back strap would be cut off of if we felt like it was necessarily worth it. I will so. say, if we had saddled this one, it would probably wind up being about I that see. much. However, okay. the real difference is the, the like the girth. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so right here is the backstrap part of the goat, and it's quite small. It's probably about yay, yay big all the way around. And then once you cook it, of course, they cook down quite a lot. So for us, it's not necessarily worth it to try to get like a backstrap or a tenderloin portion. Do you have your yeah. deer tenderloins there? fat on this and, I'll go ahead and peel this off and this was also not a particularly large doe she wasn't small by any means but she wasn't huge either the, the reason deer. that I'm showing this particular goat too because we do have a bigger goat over in the pail here is like season to season um so in one season this is the kind of goat that we'll get and in one season that's the kind of deer that we can get so it's a good it's a good comparison yeah. honestly yeah. but right here in here is where the tenderloin is. It's there, it's very small. It's probably about a fifth of the size. It's not worth cutting out. Look. Not even a fifth. Not even a fifth. <laughs> so for us with the goats, it makes sense. We've called this a saddle roast. I don't know if that's the technical I, I term. I believe so. But we've just cut out the backbone here and we'll treat this just like we do with the legs. Cook it low and slow and it'll fall off the bone a lot like pulled pork. Very delicious. We could probably also, if we wanted to, get some jerky cuts off of our goat if we felt yeah, like it. Small, smaller jerky slices. You can see how much darker the venison is. I think that's really interesting how much darker venison yeah, is versus I goat. I didn't realize how pale. I didn't either. The goat is until we had side by side. Yeah, you can see the difference. You see the th difference in the thumbnail as well. Yeah, and the from here to here, that's the exact same muscle. So even though we do raise a lot of goat meat here and we process our own goats, and it is essentially the same cost in order for us to hunt versus us to raise our goat, because when we raise our goats, we let them drink off of their mamas and we let them eat pasture before they are butchered. So it's very low cost. But again, we can't get those steaks and those lovely cuts. Now, one of the differences too, when you're eating venison versus goat, besides a little bit of a difference in flavor, is the fat. We've got a lot of fatty deer around here because we live in agricultural farmland, so they're eating a lot of soy, they're eating a lot of corn, so they're putting a lot of decent fat on. And I have rendered both goat towel and deer tallow in the past, and they're really great for body products. And I have eaten we have eaten the deer tallow as well. The difference being, I can't remember what the 
compound is or the component is within deer fat. I'll figure it out and I'll put it in the words down below. But that particular component makes the fat, I don't know, sticky is the only way I know how to describe it. Can you tell the difference like when waxier. you're crossing? Yeah, it's a lot more waxy and you feel that in your mouth. Goat's totally different. It's a lot more buttery. Um, it melts a lot like butter and it feels a lot like butter in your mouth. So it's a lot more palatable to eat the fat off of goats. So when we're trimming the goats, we're a lot less picky than we are when we are trimming up the deer because we don't want to have that waxy feeling in our mouth. I do notice it a lot processing like skinning and stuff I have to stop and wipe wipe the knife clean because it'll get such a thick wax like coating on the blade that it seems like the blade's dull even though it's still razor sharp but that waxiness I've made I made tallow soap last year and I still have some of it here and I'll show a little bit of a b-roll so you can see what that looks like those soap bars last for eternity like they get a really nice lather but they're such a hard bar of soap that they just last forever and I have really enjoyed making soap out of deer tallow now I have enough deer tallow and enough soap and a lot of goat tallow that we're going to be rendering down so I don't necessarily feel like I need to keep the tallow off of the goat off of the deer <laughs> this time but I do have the goat tallow and we will render that down a little bit later on in the video so let's take some weights this deer obviously was bigger than the goat even the bigger goat that I have this deer was bigger than that's for sure so this shoulder here which we will be parting down bone in venison shoulder from this morning just over seven pounds which is surprising it feels heavier than that doesn't it a goat shoulder about nine to ten month old goat just over four pounds so honestly really not bad with the comparison though i did cut a lot of this off because of the bullet damage okay so it would have been so heavier. probably closer to eight okay maybe not quite eight but but i did cut a decent amount off this little saddle roast here is two and a half pounds with the bones in and again with his with the back straps there's a more cut off so he was able to cut the back strap of the deer from pretty high up in the neck all the way down into the hips and we don't have that here it's just the spine section of the goat so that's the tenderloin you have just the that's the two tenderloins no <laughs> bone just over a pound <laughs> And he's got some trimming on this to do, so don't you worry. The silver skin and things he'll be taking off. That's two and a half by itself as well. Yep. That's really great. So a little over five pounds of back strap pre-trimming. So he is going to be doing more work on the venison to trim it down and things, but the goat is ready to pack up. We've had it in the refrigerator for a week. When you butcher any animal, it really is nice to give it some kind of resting time before you pack it away. So you either have to let the meat rest before you put it in the freezer or you have to let it rest afterwards. And depending on the size of the animal is the amount of resting time that you want to give it. And the reason for the resting time is to allow rigor mortis to settle out. So the animal, as soon as it's dispatched, it doesn't take long for it really start to stiffen up. And that rigor mortis really will make the meat tough if we cook it too soon before we let that settle out. So the goat having been in the refrigerator all week, the rigor mortis has settled out. The way that we store the goat the entire week was just in one of these totes here without any liquid. We will salt brine our rabbits. But we've never done that with goat. We've never found it to be necessary. So these are ready to get packaged up. I may leave one of these out so we can have it for dinner this week. That'd be good. I know. I think I only ever used these the first year. Do you want to talk about that? Because I just talked about how we stored the goat meat. So the reason I'm using this bag as opposed to the trash bag that it had been in, these are the front legs and there was a lot of damage from the bullet entrance and exit wound. The meat was real bloody. So as I cleaned it off, I used the hose and you know cut little pieces here and there to just get the damage, at least most of the damage meat off. And because of the hose water, there's that, like a gel uh -huh. that when it gets wet, it absorbs some water and holds it and it'll just continually drip and leak. The trash bag that we had it in won't breathe and it won't allow it to dry out. This bag is made of, I don't know what the material is exactly, but 
Feels like bamboo. It's rayon. It's porous, <laughs> so it at least lets the air in and out and allows it to dry out a little bit. I don't like to leave the venison in these too long. You get like a dry cure, like shell on it almost that you have to trim off. And because deer isn't a like a cow or a buffalo, like a huge cut of meat, you end up losing a significant um, percentage of meat, okay. in my opinion. That but makes sense. because I hose these off, I will at least for a day or two store them in these bags so it can kind of dry out a little bit again. Yeah, in the refrigerator. Yeah. So we've got a couple neck bones here. These are from our goats. And what I'll do is I will roast these just like you would any beef bones to make bone broth. And that's exactly what I'll do. I'll put them in a pot with a whole bunch of other bones that we've collected throughout the week or the last week or two. And I'll make a batch of bone broth and can that up. So for now, I am just going to put these in the freezer so I can kind of collect enough in order to roast them and make it worth it. I purchased this big box of two gallon freezer bags. I like this size for some of our larger game or goat type meats because a lot of the bones are much longer than, you know, the things you can buy standardly at the grocery store and they fit in these way better. I do have a vacuum sealer, but I'm out of the special vacuum seal bags. So what I'm gonna do to put the meat away today is use these freezer bags, and then I'm gonna wrap it in butcher paper. This double layer of protection is nice. It'll help prevent freezer burn, and it will also help when I'm thawing the meat out. Sometimes the meat can like leak outside of the butcher paper, and it'll help keep my refrigerator clean. That is, if these fit in here, these might not fit in here this year. <laughs> Last year when we butchered goats, we butchered some Nigerian dwarves and Nigerian dwarf hybrids. This is a standard size goat. I'm having some standard size problems here. It's not really a big problem at all. Hey guys, so it's the next day, and yesterday when I was packaging up the meat, we weighed it, and we got about 45 pounds worth of meat out of the two goats that we butchered, and the one deer was about 45 pounds as well. So really big blessing, almost 100 pounds of meat going into the freezer, plus the tallow. So let's go talk about that. Last night, I filled up this crock pot with all of the tallow. Now there's a lot of fat, at least on my goats, inside of the body cavity. So around the kidneys, kind of on the back wall. And that's the fat that I really like to keep for my body products because that particular fat is really low in any kind of flavor and it's super bright white. So this is what I have been able to render so far. There's actually two of these. See? So all I did was cut up the tallow or the fat into about quarter to half inch pieces and put it in the crock pot on low. I've let it cook down and as it starts to melt and I see this really beautiful clear tallow kind of coming to the surface, I've just been ladling it out into the jar so I still have the tallow over here doing its thing, but I really need to get dinner ready. And tonight we're gonna have roasted goat shoulder. I thought this was a perfect opportunity to show you how this works is really simple. So down here I have our goat shoulder. This is about four pounds and it's actually too long to fit inside my roasting pan. There's a tendon right here that I'm going to cut and that's gonna allow us to squish that down. There. Just like so. Now it'll fit in my pan. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna pat the meat dry. I like to do this. I feel like the seasonings stick better and we get kind of a better crust. I'm using two separate seasonings today, the classic farm dust seasoning. And then goat meat is really good with this Middle Eastern seasoning called za'atar. There's no citrus in the ingredients, I don't think, but it has almost this lemony type scent. And that's really great for cutting some of the richness of the goat meat. So I'm gonna thoroughly season both sides with both seasonings. I'm gonna add a little bit of bone broth to the bottom of the pan. Cover it with my silicone mat. Now the times that this is supposed to roast vary greatly online when you look at different recipes. I'm roasting this at 275 and the recipe that I'm going after suggests that you roast it at 350 for four hours. I feel like that that might dry out the meat a little bit so I'm gonna go for 275 
for around five hours, and then I'm gonna check it. What we're looking for is we want the meat to fall off the bone, much like pulled pork. I was actually asked recently if I grew up learning, knowing how to cook, if I grew up with my mother in the kitchen, and the answer is no. Um, so if you don't have any cooking experience, it's never too late to learn. I actually started learning how to cook when my husband and I were dating. His family is big on cooking, and I knew that if we got married that that's kind of, not that he would expect it, but that it would be kind of nice to carry that through for him, and it is. So it's something that I learned when we were dating, and it's something that I'm continuing to learn. I'm still not really good, kind of just knowing what to do, and I always have to follow a recipe. While dinner is cooking, I figured we'd come out and hang out a little bit with the girls. One of our subscribers, remembers Sheila, was asking how Calamity is doing. She's doing great. Just two in the cud. Here's all the babies, little Violet. <laughs> and the other four over here. Little Verde here. He's the most solid looking baby I think we had this fall. I don't know if you can tell the difference between Verde and Gray here. If Margie would get out of the way. Move, ma'am. But you're kind of a beast. Aren't ya? He is. By this point, all of the does that are going to kid this spring have been bred. All of the ones that were hanging out with their buck friends are now back here, except for we do still have Little Breezy over with Feral. Calamity is bred to Odie. Alpus is bred to Havoc. Talia is bred to Havoc. Tempest is bred to Nefarious. Barely is bred to Nefarious. And Christine is bred to Havoc. And then little Breezy back here, she is bred to Feral. So this is gonna be our first mini La Mancha to mini La Mancha pairing. So I'm really excited about this birth. As is Feral, you're gonna be a daddy, sir. <laughs> so highly anticipated. Kidding right here. Oh my goodness, baby boy. I gotta get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a very highly anticipated kidding. It's gonna be our last kidding of the spring. And that's all I have. There's really not that many breedings that we've done this fall. So there's not that many kiddings that are gonna happen in the spring. It's kind of weird. The reason for that is a lot of our babies that were born this past spring were either triplets, or born kind of late in the year and so they're just not big enough to have been bred this fall to kid in spring but that's okay most of my high capacity does are bred and so we'll have plenty of milk <laughs> you're just gonna let him do that to you that's not nice <laughs> mochi be nice oh gravy <laughs> I think easily the procurement or the raising of meat is one of the more satisfying things that we do on our farm. It's definitely one of the first things that we did because when, we, when I moved here, well, we moved here in 2019, Levi was deployed overseas when I raised our first 30 chickens and that was an ordeal. But we had more success with meat before we had success with the garden and now we've got success with both so we're able to completely fill our plates with stuff from the farm a lot of the time. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time and it's always really rewarding when we're able to do so. It's delicious. Thank you. <laughs>